Alright you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video we're going to be looking at episode 2 of 5 of the new series uh, NFL Undiscovered, which is following 5 international players trying to make the draft or a certain roster. I'm not actually sure. We watched the first one, it just covered a bit of basics about the training uh, centre that they're at, where they're staying, and a little bit of background on the 5 players. There's some. There's one from the. U, uh, there's two from the UK, one from Australia, one from Germany, and I can't. And two from Germany, actually, I think. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into episode number two. It's called the motivation behind playing American football. I can't wait to watch it. I'm fuck. I love this shit, man. This is so awesome. <laughs> IMG Academy. That's just the footwork part of it. The head. I saw the Gatorade Sports Science Academy before. Now we've got the, the IMG Sports Academy. That's just, all of this stuff is, it's next level, man. It's stuff that you'd never see unless you do go to the States, you know? I don't think there's anything like this for rugby. There's not. There's just not. Hands, okay? We call it inside hand, you're gonna lock it out. Okay, what that's gonna do is create a presence in that gap to help the guy next to you. An NFL playbook typically includes upwards of 600 plays. What? That consists of various assignments and formations that are dictated by the game's situation or the opponent. What we want to be is even more efficient now. While some of these concepts may carry over from the collegiate level, every team has a unique system. I'm so glad that one of these players is running back. I'm gonna watch him like a hawk, man. That's so sick. Players with the most experience and the highest capacity to learn have an upper hand. With the average NFL player having at least 10 years of football experience before becoming a professional, the biggest obstacle to overcome will be themselves. The focus at this camp is to even the playing field by learning the techniques and terminology that can help close the gap between knowing the fundamentals and truly understanding the game. There's no getting away from the big potential negative, which is lack of football experience. Put a little bit of bow in your back, just slightly. Yep. Yeah. No minutes on the field. Never put on a pad. Never put on a helmet. That's probably the only bit I'm a bit nervous about is the, uh, the bit where I have to learn all the rules, all the terminology. That's the hardest bit about it. Character is one of the biggest things we look at. So, do they have the mental capacity to do this? And then, can they do the specifics that their projected position asks? Uh, I'm really eager to just uh, be a sponge and absorb all the information around me. I always say that luck is where determination meets opportunity. So, in my career, I felt like I had no luck, I had bad luck, I had this thing go wrong, that thing go wrong, and then you have to take it into your own hands inside. Enough of that. I feel like that dedication and that persistence and that perseverance is what got me this opportunity. For some of the prospects, the goal of playing in the NFL is fueled by opportunity. But for Christopher Izala, it's a dream he's had since he was a boy. Here's the running back. I started playing football when I was 13 years old. And <laughs> what's funny, I played flag football and I was really chubby. And um, a good friend of mine at school asked me, hey, Chris, do you want to play football? Like, Hang on. Uh, do I look up his stats now? I don't know if he got drafted or not. So, nah, we won't. We won't. Mm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not we'll strong enough. I'm not big enough. He's like, come over. I said, okay, first practice. I couldn't do more than five push-ups. But I love how the team was, how they stood together, how they motivated each other, how they just run the plays, how they just were flying around and being happy and I was like, okay, I have to stay here. Somewhere, um, I really felt that I can make it to the next level. And the first thing I said was, I want to play fullback in the league. But I didn't even know what a fullback it was, you know? So, I love it. I love fullback. It. High and tight, four points of contact. 
he he wanted me to stop to play football because I didn't concentrate in stupid school. Desperate to keep his dream alive, Chris wrote a letter to his father proclaiming his love for American football and promising that he would someday play in the NFL. 2011? Eight years later, wow. just before leaving Germany to join the Pathway program, his father returned that letter, this time with his own message. He told me, Chris made me proud and fulfilled. Oh, bruv. <laughs> that is fucking sick, man. Oh. Well, he's got a fan of me now. That letter, he, like, he could have thrown it away, or he could do whatever with it, but he had it and left it at home because he knew what type of man I am, because he knows me. And he knew that I would be like pushing hard, fulfilling my dream. He's my mentor. And I think I just wanted to show them that I'm able. Although their new obsession is American football, their retreat comes from a game that feels a little less foreign. Oh, 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 I've been told that I've moved great with my feet. Now, I'm a big twinkle toes guy, you know, so. <laughs> Keep chest down. Oh! <laughs> Fuck it, I'm going for the. We'll go for miles. <laughs> That's like when you panic on FIFA and you don't know the button, so you draw the stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to football, stick to American football. Oh man, they're just having fun, man. For the general uh, public, but it is serious. transforming your body in under 90 days is a trip to the beach. For the prospects, he's preparing to handle the demands of the most physical sport on the planet. The secret to longevity isn't just about physicality, but sustainability. Yeah, when the, when the instructor brought up yoga, I was like, great, this is going to be fun. Slowly, exhale, release your left foot towards the mat. Leave your right knee as it is. But I didn't realize there's such a major component in NFL. Soften the jaw, soften the face. Your face will give you away oftentimes. I am a big, big guy, so I know yoga, but I don't know yoga. <laughs> Hold it with just right palm, release the left hand to the gym, and then twist the knee over the body. At the beginning, I was like, mm, yoga, mm, I don't like it, I love it. I love it. He loves it's it. It's a way, you know, it's a... He it's loves a, it. It's a lifestyle. I love you, man. Feel yourself powerful on the inhale and opening on the exhale. Whatever you give your energy to, that's what you can become better at. For me, I think success is very intrinsic. So it's about finding out more about myself, how I'm going to react in different situations, and how am I going to be the best athlete that I can. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to turn something raw into a finely cut diamond, ready to succeed. How old is this fella? Take on the NFL. For many of the prospects, the skills they are learning at IMG Academy is their first introduction to life as an NFL player. But that's not the case for everyone. In 2016, German wide receiver Moritz Bowringer broke new ground by being the first international player without collegiate experience to be drafted into the NFL. After spending the preseason with the Vikings, he was dropped from the roster and sent back to the developmental program. The biggest challenge I would say back then was the playbook because it was just completely different from what we had in Germany. From the physical aspect, I knew I could do all of that. It was just, I thought too much and I, I would say I tried to make everything too perfect. In an environment like this, you can overthink a lot of things. If you're not getting it right, it can get frustrating at times. Hmm. I know when I'm on a practice field, I can do way better than what I do. And sometimes I don't even know 
why I did some stuff. This time around, he's ready for a second chance. Oh, this this will be interesting. I think with Mo it's different because we're asking him to change position. He came in as a wide receiver and we've asked him to play tight end. What? Really? And now it's just how does he kind of step back, learn from the things that went wrong, and kind of. We're gonna try and make him it. change. Most people that are successful have failure, and it's, it's how they learn from it and how they adapt from it. He needs to really challenge himself to to fight and compete every day, and to win the mental battle that comes with this game. I'm definitely ready to show the deserve to be on a team. Well if he's a genuine wide receiver, he's got those skills, to have that in the tight end position would be fucking awesome on, on offense. But he's got to be big on defense, doesn't he? Although, is he a defensive end? Is defensive end the opposite of a tight end? Is that right? Tight end's on offense. Okay, he could do it. And use my second chance that I got and make a team. The challenges ahead may be unique to each Whoa. individual. It's fast. But in order to have success in the ultimate team sport, they must learn to work together. Bruh, these guys would have the best bond after this, honestly. Alright mate, that's uh, episode number two done. I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have. I've definitely enjoyed it. I cannot wait to watch this next one. And we're going to in about 30 seconds. So if you have liked this video, as always, please press like. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll see you guys back here shortly for episode number three of the 2018 version of NFL Undiscovered called Pushing the Body to New Extremes to Live a Dream. And I assume that's going to show me exactly what's necessary physically to get in the NFL. Well, somewhat. <laughs> I'll see you then. Peace out.